Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to Space Tourism. In the previous episode, we got some designs together for refueling our SSTO on the surface of Lathe. We created a canister and designed a pad for the canister to slot onto. The SSTO would then roll onto the other end of the pad, everything would be connected together, and fuel could be transferred from one out to the other. However, we may be experiencing some problems in that field, and in fact, the first thing we're going to do in this video is redesign the pad. Because the pad was made just to work, it wasn't really made to be convenient in its working. So we need to actually remake that in the VAB, put that on a rocket, send that out to Joule, and of course get the canisters out to Joule as well, from where they currently are in orbit, as we just saw. Now, this video was recorded slightly differently to usual, in that I did a live stream. Uh, if you were there for that, then hopefully you enjoyed it. If you weren't, then no matter because you're watching the footage right now. I live streamed all of this over the course of 2 hours and 45 minutes, uh, significantly longer than the average recording session for Space Tourism, but not as long as I've had to endure. In fact, immediately after, or the day after I should say, I recorded Career Mode which was a four hour recording, and you'll be able to enjoy that in its wonderful 20 minutes compression down uh, to 20 minutes in the next episode of Career Mode. So yes, this was live streamed, and it was a very good live stream, I very much enjoyed it. I basically recorded footage using the live stream software, and then exported it to YouTube, and then downloaded it from YouTube, and then now edited it and commentated over it as I'm doing right now. This isn't the optimal way, but unfortunately it's the only way, because my corruption... I was actually recording using my recording software at the same time, uh, but it corrupted the video file. Which was interesting. Unfortunately, I made the same mistake for career mode without realizing, and so I've had to download that off YouTube as well after exporting from Twitch. So there's a few things wrong with this, i.e. game sound. There is none. You won't be hearing any game sound, so this music that you can currently hear is actually from the files. This is music from the game, not music from the game, if that makes sense. These are the tracks used in the game, but they're not actually taken from the game footage, they're just separate, added on. Which is why that transition there didn't give you a transition to music. It doesn't really matter. Hopefully you'll still find the footage enjoyable to watch, I certainly hope so, and hopefully my commentating will be entertaining enough to make up for any reasons why it might not be so fun to watch. But here we go, we've built a pad. Now it's just time to roll our SSTO on and, and, and dock to it. Unfortunately this doesn't seem to be happening and I get a bit frustrated and I burn and crash and bang and yeah, explosion. Uh, so the idea was that it would be, the docking port would be at just the correct height. Just the perfect height for me to just roll over, drive or taxi, to use the correct term I suppose, taxi the SSTO over and then dock it onto these ones here. Unfortunately these ones here were too high up off the ground. So after flipping around the strut and placing it on the underside of the panel, thus reducing its height off the ground by about the height of a panel, we may be able to change this, and we're gonna hope so. Because I think we don't really end up testing it. Hmm, I'm not entirely sure, but anyway here's a testing run. An attempt to test, certainly. We strap it on a fully functioning rocket and then say, you know what, screw it! We're gonna just send it out over here and crash the launch stage and everything. Oh no, that wasn't the reason, it was a simulation. Yeah, you know I love my simulations, this was a simulation. Uh, which explains a few other weird factors as well. Like how the SSTO wasn't being driven by Matska Kerman, despite the fact that he's the only one who can pilot the thing. I suppose driven is the wrong word, it wasn't being flown by Matsuka Kerman, in fact it wasn't being flown by anyone. So this is really irrelevant, it wasn't being flown by a single person, and that's all I've said that the SSTO can be, flown by Matsuka Kerman. So whoever drives it, it really doesn't make a difference, but even if it was supposed to be Matsuka Kerman, it doesn't matter because it's simulation. Unfortunately this happens, uh, which shows that I do not have enough engines on the side, so we're going to go and put more engines on there. Unfortunately, in this situation, uh, the engines would burn down onto each other, so we have to tilt them outwards somewhat. The reason I have a fuel tank there in the first place is beyond me. <laughs> Actually, it's added mass for no real reason. Other than, I suppose, okay, we're providing fuel for the engines, that's good, right? Well, if we didn't have the fuel to carry, we wouldn't need fuel for the engines to slow it down on landing. So it's a b bit redundant, a bit of a paradox. 
we need it in order to provide a reason for it to be there, I guess. Anyway, so we have some imposter called Robus Kerman taking the place of Matska Kerman in this simulation, and now that we've adjusted the height of the docking ports, oh, would you look at that? Now this is most peculiar, and this is something that you'll need to remember. When we came within loading limit, the thing exploded. Very peculiar. I assumed at the time this was a one-off, but it turned out to be a lot more than that. So without further ado, we drive onto the pad and we get a docking. Oh, or, or we kind of get a docking. Except for the fact that the wheel decides it just wants to clip down beneath the ground. I wish I had that power. Just to decide that things didn't exist and ignore them. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's interesting. Certainly, but it doesn't seem too relevant because for a moment there we had docked. Uh, unfortunately, attempts to launch the pad up into orbit weren't particularly successful. I say that in the lightest of phrases. Hmm, interesting. But we shall try again, we shall venture forth up into space, get up into orbit, and are about to circularize when I have the bright idea that perhaps we want to drop these a bit early. So we'll set the engines on burning, we'll detach, and then. Oh god, why? Why? What What kind of stupid idiot would make that decision? Oh dear me. <sighs> Moving swiftly on, we do our launch, and this time it is actually quite successful. We launch up, we get up to our correct altitude and start turning over, drop our boosters, get up even higher, and then start burning sideways to circularize into our orbit. This time we let the fuel run out before dropping the boosters so everything happens fine. Seriously, what was I thinking? I wanted to drop the boosters early, okay, fine. For some reason I wanted them to be burning whilst I dropped them, which is not fine. Anyway, we get up into orbit, we set up our manoeuvre node, we get ourselves a dual encounter you can just see there on the top right corner of the video. Dual periapsis 1.3 or 1.4 or something meters. And that's all well and good. Unfortunately, we're using our canisters right now. Uh, but that's fine, you know, we'll take our canisters, we'll warp them round, spin them round, point them prograde, get over to our manoeuvre node, and then start burning. And we're going to get the canisters out to duel first. And that's going to be absolutely fine, apart from one crucial mistake, which we'll find out in just a second. So we orient ourselves to, correct the, to point in the correct direction, Start burning the engines. We've got six nuclear engines on our transfer stage here. Six nuclear engines. I mean, we're only pushing uh, the equivalent of one three-meter tank of fuel, and we have an entire another three-meter tank of fuel just to provide fuel for the engines. Unfortunately, this fuel does not seem to be sufficient. But that's odd. It surely should be. Oh, oh, hang on. Look at that. The fuel in the three-meter tank seems to be full, and yet it ran out so quickly. Well, it turns out what happened was that the fuel lines that were supposed to connect the fuel to the engines never quite made it on. And in this circumstance, after swapping to our pad and deciding to use that instead, the transfer stage decides to spontaneously combust. Are you seeing a bit of a trend here? Just a little bit of a trend, maybe. A trend being that everything is going wrong in this recording session. Yeah, it was quite frustrating, and it gets more frustrating later on. Don't you worry about that. Unfortunately, everything did seem to be going wrong. I think this is the fifth time, the fifth time something went wrong with that explosion just then. Yeah, not good, and later it doesn't particularly improve. People were saying on the live stream, Ah, now we've learned hot gaming secrets. Now we have discovered exactly what he does. He's like Sherlock, he's a fake. He just pretends to be clever by using very special editing techniques. You know, he cuts out all the things that go wrong. Partly true, but also mainly false. The fact that I was on a live stream doing it live, uh, and we had all these mistakes, showed that, ooh, in real life, there are so many mistakes in the recording session, but really there aren't. This was just a particularly unlucky episode, and in fact I've kept them in the recording afterwards. A to secure myself from the people saying, oh, he's dead to outlook, proof, and B, because I thought it was quite funny. And it was quite nice. It was a topic of conversation, certainly. This video is already over nine minutes long, nearly ten minutes long, and I haven't really run out of things to say yet, which is quite unusual. So, we warp out to Jewel, we do all the orbital ballet nonsense that we always do. Get down to Lave, do our aero capture manoeuvre, and lo and behold, we get an aero capture. 
After some work, and I say some work, this was about half an hour later. Yes, it was a very long live stream. I've edited it down to 20 minutes. A lot has been cut out. Uh, about half an hour after that bit you just saw then, and we're ready to begin landing. We have our orbit, we have uh, all sorts of different circumstances set up, but I still don't really know how far in front of the island I want to place our trajectory. There's a few things to factor in. There's air resistance, which is probably the biggest factor that will affect our landing zone, in that the marker where it says we're going to land is not going to be the marker where we're actually going to land because air resistance will slow us down and bring us to halt long before we get there. And in fact, we've really just started entering the atmosphere now, so it's already starting to happen. And B, perhaps somewhat effectively, not quite as big a factor as uh, factor A, is the rotation of lathe. Lathe rotates at hmm, some, some meters per second, which means that everything will be slightly twisted round towards the anti-clockwise direction, towards the east. Uh, depending on, you know, instead of where we were placing it originally. It would be quite nice that KSP would factor that in. It would be quite nice to see where the trajectory would actually be. Uh, so it would help with kind of geostationary orbits and things, to see where the planet would actually be rotated to by the time you got down there. I mean, calculating, sure, you could do that for the rotation of the planet, but calculating it for air resistance, I wouldn't expect them to be able to do that. That seems a bit harder. But anyway, after a few different tries and a few different attempts and many, many instances of quick loading, we finally get one that looks good. Bring it down too far south, we need to be burning north, so I try and turn myself around desperately, fighting the air resistance produced by those massive surface area, or by the massive surface area of those panels. In truth, this doesn't actually make sense, because in KSB, the surface area has nothing to do with the amount of air resistance you feel, but just go with it. Anyway, one final last time. We didn't quite make it that time, so one final attempt to bring ourselves down. No, excuse me. One final attempt. And once again, trying to burn north slightly. Also, feel, fearing I'm going to overshoot, we are burning retrograde somewhat. Burn north, perhaps burning a bit too far north now. We are actually on track, probably don't need to be burning it that far. And you can see we are definitely coming over. Uh, so I open up parachutes quickly, rather than actually, you know, turn the ship. Open up the parachutes, detach our transfer stage with a potential crash there, imminent. It was just, ooh, it froze, and I was like, <gasps> oh dear. It's not going to crash on me now, is it? Too long. This is about two hours into the live stream at this point. Every freeze <sighs> could be a crash, but not to worry because we bring it down, the parachutes successfully deploy. Unfortunately, the advanced SAS unit, which we had on top of our ship, decides it doesn't want to be associated with us and takes its own parachute and heads off above us. So we lost that parachute capability. Uh, but we do have six remaining on the main body of the tank, plus we have the engines to slow ourselves down before landing, so everything should be absolutely fine. We are about, what's that, 800 meters? I can't see, it's just a mass of purple. We're hmm, so, so, meters away from the base, uh, which isn't going to be too long. It surely, uh, it won't be too far of a distance for the plane to taxi over towards us. So, burning, 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 and we land without a hitch. None of that crazy explosion nonsense that happened to us back in the simulation. Uh, and hopefully it'll remain that way. Unfortunately, it won't remain that way. We swap over to the SSTO. We reverse it away from the base where it was parked so that our, our Kerbals could jump from the wing onto the base. With Matska Kerman remaining in the cockpit, like we mentioned in the previous episode, we now turn this thing around and start taxiing over towards it. That is, that is 700 meters, isn't it? I can't quite tell. The resolution of my preview is a bit smaller than 720p. I think that's 700. Yeah. Whatever the case, you'll, you'll notice in my videos that whenever I run out of things to say, I start referring to numbers on the screen. It's really funny. Whenever I start to tone down the conversation, just look at the numbers. And it will either be altitude or be distance from target or something like that. And I'll end up going, okay, 300 meters away, coming in closer, 220. And there is the explosion. There is the fabled explosion. It goes up and it bounces and explosions and bang, crack, boom. And everything is completely wrecked. And this would be devastating if I did not have another half an hour to see the same explosion happen until finally we get a good one. So, quick load, and thus begins 
another series of many, many, many quick loads until we get one that's favourable. So we happen again. Uh, it, it happens again. We swap to our... Oh, we have one, our SSTO. We swap to it and it does a massive big flip thing and bang and explosions and... Ooh. Mm, ooh, I, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Those are still connected. See the docking ports? They're all still connected together, you can tell because the struts haven't broken. Despite the fact you can't see the panels, you can definitely... Those are definitely connected together. So... Despite the fact we've lost the fuel, which, as I said at the start, is completely irrelevant, we do have a functioning pad landed on the surface of the planet, of the moon. We swap to it again quick lo after quick loading, and once again, we have another functioning pad. This time it looks even more intact. So, eventually, we do get something that is workable, something usable. In fact, this actually closely resembles the original design, uh, minus the pro body and the fuel and the engines. So, despite the fact that we've come up against our greatest adversary, weird physics in KSP, we do manage to get down a workable thing, and, you know, after doing some editing, after bringing ourselves closer to it, we can see that yes, it does remain intact, getting closer does not cause another explosion to happen. We come in a bit hot, there we go, and now it is time to do the docking. Would you believe it? They don't seem to be at the right height. And, but but we do still get a correct uh, docking. Luckily, we do get a correct. Uh, what you what you call it? A thing, a thing, a thing that puts the two docking ports together. It doesn't happen here. It happens two days later when I took it. No, not two days. Happen happens a day later when I took it upon myself to you know go off camera and work on it. And yes, eventually I did manage to get it. So if we just uh, leave me to my own devices here. No? We want to watch me struggle? Okay. Prepare the struggling. You can just see just about how the docking port is nowhere near ready to dock to it. <sighs> I attempt setting it as a target, hoping the game will construe this or interpret this as a as a declaration that yes, I want a doctor this pad, just please let me go down dock this pad. Come on! You're on top of each other. You're so close to docking. Come on! Come on! It doesn't quite work, unfortunately. Uh, at this point, at this point, I want to briefly mention something. Uh, a, Space Day is very nearly soon. Space Day, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Uh, yes, I'm going to be meeting people in Droidwitch. Go search the channel for information about that. Link in the description. And also, anyone here who may be an indie developer. There we go, so you docked. Anyone here who may be developing their own games and looking for voice actors, contact me at hocgaming at live.co.uk or send me a message on Twitter at hocgamer. I'm looking to do voice acting. It's, uh, it's uh, something I want to pursue. <laughs> yes, please do contact me. Uh, I'll leave you with this. Floating rocks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.